He's just gonna be <laughs> licking it up like. <laughs> Welcome to the Whiskey Tribe, I'm Rex, this is Daniel, we're doing the top, not even top, just 10, probably the top, the top, the greatest ever in the whole world in history the history of the planet of whiskey. It's amazing. The be all, end all list. <laughs> 10 whiskey hacks to yeah. help you improve your, your tasting abilities here. Now, yeah. we asked the Whiskey Tribe, thousands of whiskey lovers across the planet, uh, what are some of their go-to hacks? We actually added some of our own go-to hacks to really approach whiskeys from different angles to help us explore and pick apart what's actually going on inside that bottle there. All right, the first one of our examples is gonna be do a glass rinse. Yeah, this now, is a nosing technique. This is something I like to do at the end of drinking a whiskey, but it can't hurt to do it at the beginning. Mm -hmm. So we'll get just enough whiskey in here to roll it around the whole glass and then drip out Really, coat just, the whole glass and then drop it on the floor, Richard Patterson style. Yeah, just drops. You want to coat it, coat it. As now, much. what's going to happen with this is all the oils and sugars and things that aren't a part of the water, they're going to cling to the glass, and then you're going to cause a lot of evaporation, and you're going to open up this whiskey dramatically in the nose. Um, it helps if you blow a little into the glass, I find, with two glasses because you can get some of the vapors out of there. Yeah, it, it really is just expediting the evaporation of everything in that whiskey. Now let's compare it. So it just lets go It lets go of those, those oils, those flavors, those notes, and makes them easier for you to pick them out. Let's compare it to the liquid versus no liquid version. Yeah. So here's Roa Brocla. Yeah, I mean that's still dramatically different, but it's like at least double the difference. Now remember the rule with hacks is, sh what should you do? All of the things you can, <laughs> because every different method will teach you something new about the whiskey. Yeah. That's why. Mm -hmm. uh, the next hack, it's on the hack list, but it's become really, really well known, but I think a lot of people that are new to whiskey still may not know about adding some drops of water to your whiskey. So what happens when you add water to whiskey, some of the things in whiskey are water soluble and some aren't. And when you add a little bit of water, it, right at first, before it gets time to settle, you're sort of fracturing those two different things. And what happens is the non-water soluble things go straight to the top of the glass because they're trying to escape being absorbed. And your next sip will be pretty aggressive. Now, So try a sip of this, it sounds Texas blue corn bourbon counterintuitive because you think you're going to add water and it's going to dilute it even more and make it even harder to pick out notes. That's not necessarily the case. Sometimes it is. It is true if you add too much water all at once, that can happen. And your mileage may vary from whiskey to whiskey. Yeah. Some, some whiskeys, oh my gosh, it totally unlocks a big burst of notes you weren't getting, getting for. Other whiskeys, there's no real meaningful difference. There. All right, you ready for a little water added and you can taste the difference? Yeah. There you go, just yeah. a dash of water. And you can actually see, if you hold the it curl. to the light, yeah. you can see the, the water curl, like tendrils mm -hmm. going through the whiskey there because of that water. Now, a few people chimed in here uh, in the whiskey trip. We got Stephen Reynolds. Mm -hmm. He says, actually adding a drop of sparkling water instead of still water on occasion, the effervescence of the new new notes uh, does something funky and different and weird. Scott Peicher, drink a bottle of carbonated mineral water before tasting. So he's using this as a, as a palate cleanser. Not right, or in between whiskeys. Right. The third one is. The third one is, uh, this is the, the smelling thing where you're nosing with your mouth open. What's yeah. the reasoning behind having whiskey and then breathing in, nosing, smelling while keeping your mouth open, letting air pass through? Have you ever driven in a car and had some one person in the car on the highway roll down one cracked window? Yeah. And the whole car goes <laughs> Yeah. And what do you do? Either say, shut the window, <laughs> or the window. you crack another window and create a cross draft. Yeah. That's sort of what's happening. Okay. So if you have your mouth closed and you inhale vapors into your nose, they mostly pile up in your sinus cavity so then stop. There. They build up and it's hard for you to pick out what's actually going on. Well, no, they're just they're overwhelming. Overwhelming. They'll overwhelm your senses, okay. right? Uh, if you inhale through your mouth at the same time, you let the vapors pass through the sinus cavity instead of piling up. Yeah. So first just smell, agitate it a little bit so you get some vapors into the glass. Yeah. Open your mouth and inhale through mouth and nose at the same time while smelling. Yeah. What will happen is you will get less alcohol vapors and more whiskey notes. Now, and, and again, this is a mileage may vary kind of technique because I've seen some people in the comments saying they actually breathe in dominantly through their mouth. But in these comparisons, the right way is both because you want to know what changes. It'll teach you things about the whiskey. So the, the fourth one is all about how to reset your nose. Because oftentimes, especially if you're like on a whiskey tasting, you're on a barrel pick, a tour, 
um, you're at a bar with friends and you're doing a flight, sometimes you, your senses can become so overwhelmed that it's hard to pick apart the nuance and complexity that's often in whiskey. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of different ways that people do this. One of the more common ones is to, this is gonna sound ridiculous, but to reset with your own smell. The, the least socially awkward way to do this is the crook of your elbow right in here. It's a reset to zero. Your ground zero for smell, the, the way you encounter the world of smells is after your own scent, right? Your own scent is invisible to you effectively. So to get back to zero, you don't need, there's not some objective zero. Right. There's simply your ground zero, which is going to be you. Yeah. And so, your elbow is the is usually you don't have to worry about sweat from your armpit. You don't have to worry about your hands being some whatever you've touched recently. Sure. Uh, another really common one. Did somebody mention the coffee one? The coffee one is mentioned very very commonly because it's an old wives' tale. They uh, like they, well, hold your breath to get rid of hiccups. Okay, that's fine. And I'm sure there's research and studies and blah blah blah. But <laughs> it's so prevalent. It's so ingrained that even distilleries and wineries will have little things of ground coffee yeah. for you too. But it may work for some people, if it works for you. More How about your own elbow? I, I gotta be honest with you. I drink so much whiskey, I smell like whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> so the number five whiskey hack, I was, I was kind of astounded how much this worked. No, it's known as the hand thing. Mm-hmm. What is the hand? I'm gonna use a bourbon and a scotch. The hand thing is to pour a little whiskey in your hands and rub it until your hands are totally dry. Right. And you've evaporated all the liquid. Okay. And then to smell, and then to let it air a little bit, rub them together again, smell again. Right. What you're doing is you're leaving behind all the non-alcoholic, non-liquid res residual oils and right. things. Now, I learned this from uh, Simon Brooking and John Campbell from Lefroy. Right. And then I also was, it was reinforced in the bourbon class with Chrissy Martin. Yeah. Right? So what I want you to do is smell this first, oh. and then do the hand thing and see if you smell something new in the glass because of it. Like, uh, the easiest way is just to do this. Ah, okay. Seal the glass, turn it upside down, call it done. Don't do this and then drive. Yeah, there's no explaining this to a police officer. <laughs> it was a tasting technique, sir. Like, nah, you reek of whiskey, young man. Yeah. That's the essence of Lefroig's Remainder Oils. It's so good. I wish I could make a cologne out of it. This is a bit more intense than the glass. Right? Now smell the whiskey originally and see if you can catch the notes that are in your palm inside oh. the glass in a different way. Yeah, I got like a, like a raspberry now out of a freaking Lefroig. Yeah, dude. Isn't that cool? Okay, so let's do it with bourbon. Smell Buffalo Trace? Yeah. It won't be the same with bourbon. See how it's oh, less dramatic? You smell like waffles. <laughs> yeah. Molasses and oak. Now do it again. Yeah. Let your hands air out a little bit. Now you'll get more of the yeah, grain it, notes. And now you smell that and it smells like molasses and batter. Yeah. Then the number six whiskey hack. So this is really simple. An A-B comparison of a whiskey from the same category which is very basic, but very, very helpful. That's to give you a reference point. It gives you context. It gives you context, because very often, whenever you're trying to figure out what flavors are going on here, if you don't have those references or those context, that context, then it's like, am I getting a caramel? Am I getting a cherry? I don't know. So here's the thing about the human brain. Yeah. It's not good at making standalone comparisons. If I say, how much do you think this baseball cap costs? It's anyone's best guess. Right. If I say, which one of these hats is more expensive? Right. Now you sure. have a way to make a comparison. So what do you compare? The answer is you compare whiskeys based on what you're trying to understand. If you're trying to understand the, the nature of grain impact on whiskey, right. then you should compare whiskeys with different dominant grains. Sure. However, if you're trying to understand regionality and scotch, then you should compare single malts from different regions. Especially if you have a big enough collection that you can smell something, if it reminds you of something, yeah. go find that thing and see how they're different. And Toilet. this is when the nosing kits really are fun to play with. They're expensive, but yeah. they are kind of hard to beat in terms of convenience and precision yeah. with the notes that are available in whiskey. So the next one, you were very much on the fence about, if not in disagreement with. Yeah. This works for me. Yeah. This works for me, and if I'm going into a whiskey and I haven't had whiskey in a while, and um, the first thing that's gonna hit me is that the burn. It's the alcohol, and you have to fight your way through the alcohol to try and figure out what's going on there. If you start with 
you don't have to do it shots, but start, start with a little bit of vodka, just something very neutral, something flavorless. Then whenever you get into the whiskey, you've acclimated to the burn, mm -hmm. and what you're able to better pick out are the flavors, are yes. the nuts. All right, so number eight, Nathan Huey says, Sea stem tasting method. This is yeah. from Adam Adam Carmer. Do you know what this is? Yeah. Adam Carmer. So basically, he describes it. Nathan describes it as taking a very small sip and hold it under your tongue in the front of your mouth without agitating for 15 seconds. This allows the sal uh, saliva to dilute it and very carefully swallow small amounts with five second intervals in between swallowing. Try to get four or five swallows out of it. Once you have done this, you can nose the whiskey very easily, and the next sip is magnificent. Okay, so now try that whiskey. Essentially what you're doing when you do this is you're overloading the sensory inputs of your tongue oh, yeah. to numb certain things and make them white noise so that your next sip, uh, things stand out that used to be buried. So it doesn't help you understand a whiskey in its entirety. It makes you more acclimated to the harsh stuff, so you're more sensitive to the more nuanced. The subtleties, yeah. So it's one way of opening yourself up to another part of what's going on in a whiskey glass. And the name of that method is the Karma Spirits Tasting Enhancement Method, for those that want to look into that a bit more. Okay, so this one I was on the fence about including, uh, and I wasn't going to. Okay. Uh, but Stephen Reynolds says, a pinch of salt dissolved in the mouth, you wait a few minutes, and then he specifically says it works really well for him with scotches both sweet and smoky. Multiple people started showing up and agreeing, oh yeah, that totally works for me. Holy crap, dude. Got it right in the salt hole. Well, it did make me hypersensitive to the sugars in that whiskey. Yeah. This is a known thing in baking. If you want something to, to accent the sweetness, yeah. then you add salt. Here's what I will say, it does change the taste. It does. I don't know if I like how it changes it, and but it definitely changes it. The next one, this was Sean Sprutch. Small sips and chew the whiskey. Yeah, so this so, is the way that you actually are, are drinking it. It's sometimes referred to as the Kentucky Chew, but it's done in, in, in all areas of whiskey. And it's, it's a similar method to the hold it in your mouth. The reason you're chewing is because it lets you spread the whiskey around your mouth without swishing it and over agitating it. So it's just a, a way to lightly move around the whiskey, mm -hmm. get the coating without it, you know, you stretching out your, your mouth and your lips and your cheeks and just blasting your mouth with that hot alcohol yep. those notes. Those I think categorize well enough as hacks. I think yeah. there were some pretty solid tips though. Yes. Joshua Butler says, hold your pinky straight out when tasting, it's amplified tenfold because what does Josh Galladay say? Oh, that's called a flavor antenna. Yes. Yeah, everybody knows that. It, it amplifies, a, draws in. Yeah, that's focuses. a well-known whiskey thing. Focuses the flavor. It, this is just tips, not heck. But if you're going on a tasting with some friends, uh, you probably want to lay off the really heavily scented stuff because as much as you can probably get used to, you know, your own shampoo and body lotion, other people around you haven't been wearing it all day and it's totally yep. going to throw them off. And for the love of God, make sure you take a shower before you go no, as and hang out fact, with people. You don't want to be that person. Uh, Louis Kaminsky, here's a tip, says let the whiskey breathe. And yes. Sample it in stages over 20, 30 minutes. Another uh, YouTube whiskey channel, Ralphie. Yeah, he is a big proponent of this. Yes, it and is. He's right on. Yeah. Now, what I will say is, this is a weakness of when we're doing our reviews. We don't have time to let it sit for 20 minutes. And honestly, even if we did, we wouldn't do it. Yeah, but <laughs> yeah, that's probably true. Uh, but uh, it is something that when I get a new bottle and I'm in my office, yeah, I will pour a glass. And then I will start sipping it and I will take at least 30 to 45 minutes to finish it. And this is not even a tip. This is super obvious and basic. If it's cold, if it has ice, it's going to dull the flavors. You mm -hmm. really need it to be at least room temperature. Elton Billing says, that's another tip, to understand a whiskey, you really should probably revisit it about two or three times. Absolutely. Absolutely. After different food, yes. after having other whiskeys, yes. a different mood, different time of day. Yeah. Did you know that your palate is actually at its best only a few hours after you wake up? Mm. Breakfast whiskey. And when we're doing tastings and blendings at the distillery, we will often do them, you know, 10, 9 30. That's when you're fresh. Yeah. So, any whiskey, regardless of whose opinion you often listen to, any whiskey, if you're curious about it, is worth 
trying a few times to come to your own conclusion about it. And finally, TJ Turner uh, says, explore it with food. Absolutely. Is, yes. Is, goes, this is when I discovered that Talisker was one of my favorite whiskeys. Mm -hmm. It was at a dinner where I watched the whiskey change completely over each course. Right. And it gave me a whole new appreciation for Talisker. So, at the end of the day, in the Whiskey Tribe, the number one rule is the best whiskey is the whiskey you like to drink. And the way you like to drink it. Sure. So as much as we talk about like hacks and the ideal ways to approach whiskeys from different angles, blah, 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 you just do what works for you. Finally, there's one tip that I agree with more than any other thing we've talked about today. This came from, uh, this came from Ryan Holiday. Okay. Halliday. Just find a person with a lot of whiskey mm -hmm. and mooch the hell out of their collection. Variety will help you find differences. <laughs> so you need a friend with variety? I think I, I think I am that guy. <laughs>